There are many science fiction movies nowadays, but only a few have a premise as wild as this one. A scientist clones a beautiful girl to make then her his wife. Follow the story to the end and discover how brilliantly the director and screenwriter have packaged the story in this film. In the middle of a car ride through the mountains, Elizabeth wakes up after dreaming that she will find a brilliant man who will take her into their secret world. The man driving Dr. Henry Kellenberg is her new husband. When they reach his house, he introduces her to his servant Claire Stratton and his blind son Oliver. They then enjoy a huge dinner before retiring to their bedroom for their first night as a married couple. The following day, Henry gives her a tour of the house, which boasts dozens of rooms. Each room has a unique lock that only opens by scanning your thumb, and they have programmed the locks to recognize both Elizabeth's and Henry's thumbs. However, he forbids her from entering one specific room. He makes her promise not to all while getting intimate with her right there in the hallway, and act Claire witnesses. Henry informs her that he must leave early the next morning for work. The following day, while discussing lunch, Elizabeth seizes the opportunity to ask Claire why a Nobel Prize winning man like Henry would marry a simple woman like her. Claire responds that she doesn't know and then leaves. That night, Elizabeth notices Claire and Oliver sneaking out of the house. Unable to sleep, she eventually decides to check the forbidden room. Inside, she discovers a lab containing a set of strange machines. Shocked, she opens one and finds a sleeping body resembling her. Panicking, Elizabeth runs out, bumping into a tray and cutting her finger. After bandaging the cut, she tries to make a phone call, the line is dead. Overwhelmed, she falls asleep and doesn't wake up until noon the next day. Feeling awkward around Henry, she converses with him about their days. She mentions the dead phone and Henry dismisses it as a common issue in that area. He then inquires about her finger, so she lies, saying it was just an accident before he takes her to their bedroom to spend the day in bed. Uncomfortable and upset, Elizabeth ends up crying. Henry leaves the bed in the middle of the night, and Elizabeth follows him. She barely reaches the stairs when Henry catches her and declares that she must be punished for disobeying him. He then reveals a match and begins chasing her around the house. Elizabeth hides in the wine cellar, unable to escape as the locks no longer accept her thumb. Henry enters, doesn't see her, and leaves to wait in the living room. When Elizabeth finally emerges, she finds the living room empty, grabs a fire poker, and tries to go upstairs, but Henry, hidden behind them, grabs her ankle, making her slip. He then emerges to murder her with the matchet. The following day, Claire and Oliver help Henry bury the body in the woods before they have breakfast together as equals. Claire demands that Henry stop this madness before he gets caught, but he refuses. In the afternoon, his friend Frank Logan, a detective, visits him. After telling Frank that Elizabeth is sleeping, Henry asks him about his troubles. Frank confesses that his department is under investigation for accepting payoffs. Although spared, he must testify against some of his friends. Henry coldly responds that it's better to be the torturer than to be tortured, which Frank finds disturbing. Meanwhile, Claire writes in her journal until Oliver interrupts her with some flowers. She rejects them and tells him to stop bringing gifts. Oliver questions why she stays if she is so unhappy. Claire says it's because she knows things, but Oliver believes it's because she loves Henry. After sending him away, Claire takes her pills. Six weeks later, Elizabeth wakes up from a dream during a car ride through the mountains, imagining finding a brilliant man who would lead her into a secret world. Her wedding dress is different, but the routine remains the same. Henry introduces her to the family, shows her around the house while Claire watches from afar, makes her promise not to enter the forbidden room, and after dinner and dancing, they spend their first married night together. Before falling asleep, Henry tells her he must leave the next day for work-related reasons. Unable to sleep, Elizabeth goes to the kitchen where Claire smokes. Elizabeth expresses her desire to learn more about Claire, but Henry interrupts and takes Elizabeth back to bed before Claire can respond. The following day, Elizabeth finds herself alone in the house. After wandering for a while, she gives in to her curiosity and enters the forbidden room. Inside, she discovers a copy of herself in a machine. She runs away, but this time, the capsule opens and the other Elizabeth comes out and follows her. The copy finds Elizabeth sleeping, checks that Claire and Oliver are gone, and then begins to touch Elizabeth's face and lift her pajama top. The next day, Elizabeth wakes up at noon again, finds her clothes disarranged and encounters Henry, asking if she is okay. She goes to the bathroom to wash, but Henry tries to follow her. Despite her efforts to close the door, Henry forces his way in and grabs a towel. When he accuses her of disobedience, Elizabeth tries to run, but Henry quickly makes her fall and begins choking her with the towel. After a struggle, she manages to kick him off and runs again, only to find the exit door locked against her thumb. 
With the windows unbreakable, Elizabeth rushes to the kitchen to grab some knives while Henry prepares an anesthetic soaked cloth. Henry goes to the living room to play the piano, then leaves a recording playing to trick Elizabeth into thinking he's still there. The plan succeeds, she leaves her hiding spot, and Henry surprises her with the cloth against her nose and mouth. Elizabeth struggles until she falls asleep, but it's all a ruse to lower his guard. She soon wakes and stabs Henry over her shoulder, killing him. Both fall to the floor, and as Henry bleeds out, the anesthetic takes effect and Elizabeth falls asleep. When she wakes up hours later, she drags Henry's body to the door and tries to use his fingers to open the lock, but it fails. Next, she cleans the floor, covers Henry's body with his jacket to conceal it, takes a shower, removes her wedding ring, and burns her bloody pajamas. Later, while napping on the couch, Elizabeth is startled awake by a ringing phone, Henry's mobile, showing many missed calls from Claire. Elizabeth calls 911 and reports being locked in her house but doesn't know the address. Claire and Oliver return before Elizabeth can provide more information to the 911 dispatcher. She quickly hangs up and pretends she has been reading all along. They are shocked to see her there and even more surprised when she tells them Henry is upstairs sleeping. This news makes Claire very nervous and she barely enters the kitchen before suffering a heart attack. Claire manages to call 911 with her phone before passing out and soon after an ambulance arrives to take her away. Elizabeth tries to use this opportunity to leave, but Oliver stops her. He tells her he cannot protect her from the police if she leaves. He knows Henry is dead and believes Claire's claim that she acted in self-defense even reciting the secret world phrase Elizabeth dreamed about before asking her to show him where the body is. Together, they take the body to the incinerator. While there, Oliver asks Elizabeth about her past. She tells him that as a child, she was often sick in the hospital, her parents died in a car crash, and she was raised in an orphanage. Oliver reveals that those memories are from the other house nearby, where he and Claire sleep. She lived there until she was eight. Although Claire would better explain this since she was part of the experiment Oliver still tries, he tells Elizabeth she has been incubated in the forbidden room like an egg. Six genetically identical copies were made, she is the fifth Elizabeth Harvest. As they see Frank's car approaching, Oliver quickly coaches her on how to handle the situation. Elizabeth had met Frank before, and Henry had explained her infrequent presence by saying she had a sleep disorder. She greets Frank in the living room, telling him Henry is napping because he isn't feeling well. While Oliver fetches them some water, Frank mentions the 911 call he heard about. Oliver returns and lies that Claire made the call when she had her heart attack, a deception Elizabeth supports. As Oliver leaves to get something else, Frank comments on how strange it is that everyone in the house has a problem. Elizabeth with her supposed sleep disorder, Claire with her weak heart Oliver who is blind, and Henry not feeling well. However, the situation escalates when Oliver returns with a rifle and shoots Frank dead. He explains to Elizabeth that Henry had been paying Frank off since he brought back another Elizabeth clone home three years ago, whom Henry also killed, just as he had done with every clone until now. Oliver reveals that after Elizabeth turned eight, she was put back in the tank, which explains the gap in her memory. She was only brought out for physical therapy and to have her mind filled with fabricated memories and events to shape her personality. Overwhelmed, Elizabeth decides she wants to hear no more about the experiment but once again helps Oliver take the body to the incinerator. Afterward, Oliver instructs her to pack a bag with clothes and some money from the safe so she can escape. However, before she can leave, he asks her to read Claire's journal because he cannot and needs some vital information, then locks her up until she finishes reading. Elizabeth begins reading the journal with no other options to learn how it started. Everyone knew of Henry's breakthroughs in cell research, and he retired a billionaire after patenting some vital cell processes. Five years ago, he invited Claire, known for her work in neurodegeneration, to work for him. He took her to the forbidden room and showed her the clones he made of his wife Elizabeth, who died giving birth to Oliver from a rare strain of Werner syndrome. Henry used her DNA to clone her, successfully creating six identical copies. However, the first two showed complications at birth and quickly died, so he decided to put the other four into cryogenic sleep until a cure could be found. Claire initially refused the job due to ethical concerns, but Henry quickly convinced her by highlighting the unique scientific opportunity she would have. Two years later, Claire cracked the code and they began implanting memories into the clone's mind. The third Elizabeth woke up physically healthy but disoriented with a short memory span. Days later, Elizabeth discovered the harvest room and ran away. Frank found her and took her back to the house, where they pretended she was Claire's niece with mental issues. Frank still had to file a report despite this, so Henry paid him off to keep everything secret. During her reading, Oliver interrupts by bringing her some food. 
He apologizes for locking her up but promises they are on the same side. Elizabeth jumps on Oliver as soon as he opens the door, demands the door code and ties him up with his belt to prevent his escape. She tried the code on the door, but Oliver had lied. When she checks on him, she sees that he has already escaped. She stops by the kitchen to grab a knife, then heads to the harvest room, where she finds Oliver giving the final clone physical therapy to keep her alive. Oliver swears he will let her go after she finishes reading the journal. As she approaches to examine the clone, she puts her asleep by injecting an anesthetic into her neck. After dreaming about the experiences she and the other clones went through, Elizabeth wakes up in her room, chained to the furniture with some food left by Oliver. Removing the chain proves pointless, so she returns to reading the journal. After paying off Frank, Henry and Claire continued their tests, but a few days later, the third Elizabeth suffocated. Henry claimed he had found her face on the pillows, but Claire was skeptical and asked no further questions. After discovering her condition had returned, they buried her in the woods before resuming their research. Six months passed until they exhausted every combination. Losing hope, Henry considered turning off the machines, but Claire disagreed and spent the night with him. Afterward, Henry wanted to turn off the machines as they weren't working, though Claire objected. At present, Oliver brings more food and offers information exchanges. Elizabeth tells him that Claire never mentions him and that she started an affair with Henry after failing to crack the code. However, Oliver corrects her. Claire always succeeded. Henry corrupted the samples. In return, Oliver reveals that she's cured and all the clones lived there at age 8 while he was away at boarding school. He returned at 12 and met the second Elizabeth, whom he found very attractive, as he wasn't blind then. They quickly became friends, but Henry, driven by jealousy, attacked Oliver in his sleep, blinding him. Oliver expresses his disdain for seeing Henry and Elizabeth together before leaving the room. Claire ended the affair when she realized she could never replace Elizabeth, whom Henry continually discussed. When she confronted him about his desires, he confessed he wanted to relive his wedding night repeatedly to experience that euphoria again. Initially reluctant, Claire eventually assisted in bringing Elizabeth Ford to life. While working on her body, she questioned the absence of records of Elizabeth giving birth and hinted that Oliver might be a clone of Henry, not his biological son. Henry expressed concern that Elizabeth would prefer the young boy she fell in love with, not his older self. Disturbed by this revelation, Elizabeth currently sets the journal aside. After two days of absence, Oliver wakes her up with scissors at her neck and a bleeding hand, refusing to explain where he had been. Elizabeth tells Oliver the information he wants. Claire suspected he was a clone, but Henry convinced her otherwise by showing her the birth certificate and having her call a doctor. Now confirmed to be Henry's son, Oliver can be whatever he wants. Struggling with these facts, Oliver gets off her, but Elizabeth, guessing that he loves her, convinces him to come closer, promising they can now be together. As soon as he approaches, she pushes him away, seizes the scissors and the key for the chain, and demands the door code. The sixth and final Elizabeth clone interrupts as she begins furiously kicking him. Dressed in a wedding gown and armed with a rifle, she calls Oliver Henry. Elizabeth V tries to convince her that Oliver is the bad guy, but Elizabeth VI believes Oliver over her and knocks her to the floor. This gives V a chance to recover the scissors and stab Oliver in the leg. Then she grabs Oliver as a hostage, but this doesn't stop Elizabeth VI, who fires the rifle, killing Oliver and injuring her previous clone. Elizabeth V exits the room and finally escapes through the door using the correct code. However, as she steps outside, Elizabeth VI appears and shoots her again. Before dying, V implores VI to read Claire's diary to learn the truth. After washing and changing into new clothes, Elizabeth VI reads the journal while having breakfast. The night Henry killed Elizabeth IV with a matchy, Claire heard her scream and went to investigate. Instead of explaining, Henry told her he had redone her contract and transferred all his assets to Claire, enabling her to continue her research. Claire threatened to call the police, but Henry pointed out that no one would believe her because Elizabeth was already considered dead to the world. He confessed to taking joy in repeatedly killing her without legal repercussions, as these copies never felt natural to him. Claire begged him to stop, and Henry promised to try his best. In the present Claire returns from the hospital and meets Elizabeth at the door, who has a packed bag ready. She hands Claire the journal, telling her she's earned the house and the money, so she should use them for something good. Then Elizabeth leaves, finally free and awakened from everything imposed into her head. The movie ends.